Today in our 2018 Ford F-150, we're going to be taking a look at the Airlift Wireless One Compressor System for Air Helper Springs. That's going to be part number AL25980EZ. And to help us with our installation, we're also going to be installing the Airlift Load Lifter 5000 Air Helper Springs. Whenever we have a heavy load in the back or we're towing a heavy trailer, the back end is going to sag down. Well, we have airbags to help support it, but every time that we change our load or change the trailer, we're going to have to get out and manually check the airbags and adjust the pressures as necessary. Well, our wireless one is going to allow us to not have to get out of the truck at all, or if we do get out, we can watch and see how level it's going to be. With the press of a button, we can set our pressure to what we want, and the airbags will fill up. And having that wireless remote is going to be really nice because we're not going to have to come to the back where our inflation valve is, check the pressure, get a hose out and adjust everything. We can do everything from either inside the cab or outside watching it adjust. We can increase the pressure by pushing the up arrow. Or we can decrease the pressure if we need to let some air out. This is going to be a really nice feature because we're not going to have to get out of the truck and manually check the inflation valves for each trailer or different load that we have. What I really like about this compressor is the fact that it's going to have an easy mounting system. It's going to have the bracket, a heavy duty compressor, and the manifold all integrated into one piece. That way we only have to mount one thing to the frame rather than mounting each separate component. Our Wireless One compressor is going to work with any brand of airbags. Just keep in mind it is going to level your vehicle out front to back and it's not going to work independently from side to side. As far as the connections go, we're only going to have to plug in one airline that's going to go back to our airbags and then we'll have a connector that's going to supply all the power that we need. The compressor itself is going to have a maximum pressure of 120 psi. It's going to have a 1.03 CFMs and a 9% duty cycle, and it is going to be 12 volts. What I really like about the compressor is the fact that we're just going to have a simple connection, so we're not going to have to run any airlines or wires into the cab of our truck, because it's going to have a Bluetooth signal that's going to send it to the handheld remote. And if we are inside the truck, we can actually clip our remote to our sun visor, that way it will be ready for us whenever we need to make any kind of adjustments. And our compressor and the remote here are going to use Bluetooth, which gives us another option because there is a downloadable app that you can use with your smartphone to adjust and monitor your airbags. So now that we've seen what our compressor looks like and gone over some of the features, let's show you how to get it hooked up. Now this is going to mount to the frame somewhere and we're going to be using these two holes. There is a U-bolt that comes in the kit. You need to make sure that it's big enough to go around the frame or we can use this as a template and drill and put bolts into the frame. So we mounted our compressor on the passenger side frame rail on the outside of the frame since our exhaust is extremely close on this side. Now the way we did it was is we used our compressor bracket as a template. I marked the two holes then I drilled a quarter inch hole through and then took the self tapping bolt and secured it to the frame. And as you can see, I'm shaking the whole truck so it's a nice solid mount. Now we can get ready to install and route all of our airlines. If we come to the front of our compressor at the very bottom here, we'll have a quarter inch push connect fitting. So we can grab our quarter inch airline, we're going to plug it in, and you want to push until it bottoms out and give it a quick tug to make sure it locks in place. Now I'm going to go ahead and run these and hook them up to our airbags and I'll show you how I did it. So I ran my airline over to the frame and I used a lot of these holes that were already existing to secure it against the frame so it wouldn't move around too much. And once I got to this rear body mount, I went over to the inside. Now this is the airline coming from the compressor. You can see this is where we made all of our connections. So our airline coming from the compressor goes into a T. One end of the T is going to connect to our stainless steel lines with that included adapter that's with our airbags. The other side of the T is going to go into another T. And again, one side is going to connect to the airbags. But then this line, we routed back towards the back till it got to the rear bumper here. And I just routed it down and over. 
and I mounted my manual inflation valve right there in the step. That way in case we ever lose power or our compressor is not able to run because of a dead battery or anything else, we can still inflate and deflate our airbags. So with all the air lines ran, now we can just make our electrical connections. Coming off of our compressor, we're gonna have this black wire with the ring terminal on it. That's gonna be our ground wire. Now we're gonna to need to secure this directly to the frame. So I'm just gonna kind of route my wire away a little bit, and have it kind of loop back, so I have a nice solid point of the frame here. I'll take the included self-tapping screw and a 3 8 nut driver I'm going to go right into the frame. And when you tighten it down, you want to make sure that ring terminal doesn't move on there, but it's not so tight that it'll strip it out. So now we can take our wiring harness, and we're going to plug the plug in directly right here, right above that airline fitting. Just want to make sure you have it lined up the right direction pushing it until it locks in place. Now we'll have this red wire that has a terminal connected to it coming off the compressor. We're gonna wanna cut that terminal off. And we're gonna strip back the end of our wire. Take one of the included butt connectors in our kit and we'll crimp it in place. Now this wire that we put our buck connector on is going to connect to the red wire with the white stripe that's coming off of the plug here. So if we come down a little bit, we'll see that they're already going to have a good little bit of wire extended out and it is pre-stripped. So we can take the end of our wire, put it into our buck connector, and we'll crimp it down. I'm going to use a heat gun to shrink down the connector, but if you're using an open flame like a torch or a lighter, you want to be extremely careful not to burn or char the connector or the wires. We need to run our wiring harness up to the engine bay, that way we can make our connections at the battery. So I would suggest going along the frame until you get to the top, and you want to watch out for any moving parts or any extreme heat sources that may damage the wire. I suggest running it along the frame rail, that way we can stay away from any heat sources or moving parts, and then we need to get up top to the battery. So I'll go ahead and run the wire, and then I'll show you how I did it. So I ran my wire across the top of the frame here, just zip tying it to some existing wiring and other spots, and came forward, and once I got to about the wheel well right here, I went over this body mount, and I went straight up, that way I didn't have to deal with any of the suspension components right here. And I actually just reached up and fed the wire up into the engine bay and then grabbed it from up top. Then my bundle of wires, I just anchored it to this existing wiring close to the edge here. That won't have to worry about it falling back down. Now we're going to have plenty of wire to work with. We don't need all of this, so I'm just going to come a little bit past the battery because I know I can reach everything. And I'm going to trim all three wires about to where the hood goes. That way I know I have enough. So we'll trim the excess off. Now these are taped together, so you can just kind of cut the tape apart so we can get access to each one of the wires individually. So we're gonna start with our black wire. We'll strip back the end of it. We'll take one of the ring terminals in our kit and we'll crimp it in place. Then we can come to the negative post on the battery, and we'll take a 13 millimeter socket, and we're gonna remove the nut right there. And we'll slide the ring terminal over, and we'll hook the negative back up. You wanna make sure you put any of the other ones back on there if they happen to come off. Now our red wire is going to be our power source, however we want to make sure that we put a fuse in place to protect our circuits. So we can take our fuse holder, and it's going to be one continuous piece, so we'll just cut it in half. 
and we'll strip back both ends of the wire. On one end, we'll take a buck connector and we'll crimp it in place. And then on the other free end, where we just stripped the other end of the wire, we'll take another one of our ring terminals and we'll crimp it off. Then we can cut the excess off of the red wire. We'll strip back the end and crimp that buck connector in place. At this point, you wanna make sure that the fuse is not in the fuse holder yet. We'll lift up the cover on the positive post of our battery. And we're gonna be hooking it directly to this connector right here. So we'll grab a 716 socket So we're gonna have one more wire, it's gonna be our pink wire. Now this is gonna be completely optional, you don't have to hook this up, but what this wire is gonna do is it's gonna hook up to an ignition source, that way every time we turn our key on, our compressor will kick on and double check all the pressures for everything so we don't have to hit the remote. So with that being said, if you wanna leave it to where you have to use the remote, you can just put your fuse in, you're ready to go. But with our pink wire, the hardware to get it plugged into an ignition source does not come with our kit, so you may want to go to the auto parts store and pick up a fuse tap. But we'll come to our fuse box, which is located right here. We'll go ahead and open it up. And we'll remove the cover. We'll set it aside. And we're going to need to test each one of these fuses to see which one only has power when the key is turned on. So if I come to my fuse panel, we're going to have this row of several 10 amp fuses. We can see this end one here is not going to have any power right now. Well, the key is off, so I'm going to go ahead and turn the key on and retest this fuse, double check that it does get power when the key is on. Now with the key in the on position, we can see that I am getting power to this fuse. So this spot right here would be a good spot to use for our fuse tap. So I'm going to start by pulling the fuse out, use a fuse puller or a pair of needle nose pliers. We're going to hold on to this fuse and then pick up another 10 amp micro fuse to go along with it. We're going to be using a fuse tap to get our power. So we'll take the factory fuse that we pulled out and it's going to go closest to the terminals on the fuse tap. And then we'll take the new 10 amp fuse that we got and we'll put it right above that. So we're going to make sure both fuses are fully inserted. But before we plug it in, we'll take our pink wire, make sure we have enough to route it into the fuse box, and we'll attach it to the buck connector. So just to make sure you have enough wire, and then we'll take our fuse tap, and we're going to plug it in just like we would a normal fuse. And we can just tuck our wire down so it's not going to interfere with the cover. So now we can go ahead and put our fuse in. And now would be a good time to go back and clean up any wires or any airlines that we need to make sure everything's nice and secure. We go and grab our controller now. And you wanna make sure that the battery is in there and we're gonna push any button, it'll wake up our controller. Once it's woken up, the screen will light up and it'll say devices and give you a number, that's gonna be the compressor. We'll push the single dot and it'll pair it up We'll get a message saying pairing complete. And then we can simply use the up and down arrows to inflate our airbags to the desired pressure. I'm gonna set mine to about 40 PSI. That way I can check for any kind of leaks. I'm gonna take some soapy water. I'm gonna spray down all my connection points, whether it be a T or the compression fittings. But you're gonna spray each one of those points down. And what we're looking for is we're looking for expanding bubbles. Obviously we're gonna have a little bit of bubbles because it is soapy water, but we wanna look for those expanding bubbles that are popping. If we have those, then we have a leak. 
So I'm gonna finish spraying down the rest of the system and see if I have any. So here, right here, you can see we have a leak because that bubble's expanding and eventually it will pop or more will come. That's how you know you have a leak. But if the soap is just sitting on the fitting and it's not expanding like this, then we're okay. Typically, if you have a leak at one of these push fitting connections, what you can do is just pull the hose out and then make sure that it's fully seated in there. That's what I did. And as you can see now, we don't have any leaks, even if I start pulling on the lines and twisting them around. That'll finish up your look at the Airlift Wireless One Compressor Systems for Air Helper Springs, part number AL25980EZ on our 2018 Ford F-150.